Welcome to Truth, Money, and Freedom. Today is Tuesday, June 4th, 2019. And guess what, gang? We've got a real big treat for you tonight. With me tonight, I have American Man 1967, Chaos Craig, Conjecture, and Iron Witch. All of us converging on a single topic, which is a new bill coming out. There's a Senate and a House bill called the Threat Assessment Prevention and Safety Act of 2019. There's a lot of data on this, so we thought we'd assemble the best minds to go through this and get as many points of view towards uh, uh, working on this at the same time, get you guys the information you need, and then you guys can call your, your senator and your congressman. But basically this bill, there's two bills, and you guys can see this on the screen right now. I'm doing a somewhat of a split screen so you guys can see who's talking on Discord while we're going through this. The uh, HR bill is number 838. And the Senate bill is uh, 265, or S265. Both of them carry the same name, the Threat Assessment Prevention and Safety Act of 2019. And uh, we're going to start going through little snippets of this. Uh, we could do a big picture thing, but I think uh, a, a big picture thing is probably better at the end. We can actually start working on small parts of this. Okay, gang, anyone who wants to chime in, please do. Let's get the, the ball rolling on this podcast. Oh, by the way, I want to say thank you to American Man 1967 who actually brought this to my attention. He's already done a couple of videos on this, and we're trying to reach as many people as we can because this is one of those bills that's kind of like the Patriot Act, which is kind of nibbling away at your rights. And we'll get into the guts of that in just a moment. Hey, welcome, everybody. What's up, TC? Hey there, American Man. Hey, thank you again for bringing this to my attention. Um, this is a very interesting bill here. Um, I'm going to actually read a little bit, if you guys don't mind here. Uh, and then also, we'll get Iron Witch involved. We're, we're very happy to have him, another YouTuber, a uh, great YouTuber and a great thinker. Okay, let me read from the bill. To develop a national strategy to prevent targeted violence through behavioral threat assessment and management and for other purposes... And for other purposes. Well, uh, unfortunately, they just, you know, didn't say anything more about it in that sentence. <laughs> it just ended with for other purposes. And Iron Witch was pointing that out a little while ago, too, when we were doing our pre-meeting here. Um, but at any rate, anyone, go ahead and chime in. Um, we'll, you could talk about the medical side, the education side. Um, and I've got uh, the, right now on my screen, I've got the Senate version of the bill, if you guys want to link up with me on that. Um, and we'll go to the House version of the bill here in a little bit. But uh, sure. go, go ahead, American man. I wanted to point something out right out of the gate that's very important for everybody to, uh, to know that's going to be uh, listening tonight. These bills were written on January 29th of 2019. And now, don't quote me on this, but as far as I know, this didn't come out into the public till after the Virginia Beach mass shooting. Okay. So if we can put that together in my mind, and this is of my opinion, I want to stress that to everybody, I believe that this Virginia Beach shooting was the perfect time for the government to expose what they have planned with these two bills. Okay, gotcha. So you're drawing a direct link from Virginia Beach to you know this new uh, Threat Assessment Prevention and Safety Act of 2019. And the reason why I'm doing that is because if we go back as far as back as the beginning of 2018, we see that our government and mainstream media has a history of doing just that. There'll already be a bill that has been written up and waiting to be brought out to light to the public. And then there'll be some kind of traumatic mass shooting event that'll take place and then plop, there's the bill. Mm -hmm. Yep, understood. Mind if I interject? Go ahead, Conjecture. Come on in, buddy. And on that note, there's a quote from Julius, not actually not Julius Caesar, my bad from uh, Winston Churchill, but probably even going back to the Romans and before, we just don't have, or at least I don't have a lot of awareness of this being before, but it's something politicians have probably said forever. And it is, never waste a good crisis. A lot of times they'll have an agenda or a bill or something sitting on the shelves just waiting for some incident to happen to push their agenda forward. 
Absolutely. You know, I believe Hillary Clinton has been quoted saying that several times. Yeah, and so is that guy who was uh, who was in the Obama administration and up being the mayor of Chicago, Rahm Emanuel um, or something like that. I can't remember his name. Right, right. Um, That's his name. Okay. Let me uh, read one more thing here so we can get uh, start getting a bigger scope here. Uh, let's see. In uh, Basically, in the spirit of actually taking this, I'm going to take them one at a time from one. The first thing right. here is incidents of targeted violence are impacting our nation frequently and indiscriminately. So basically, that's the uh, sense of Congress. It's the sense of of Congress that incidents of targeted violence are impacting our nation frequently and indiscriminately. Well, let's talk about that because uh, Congress keeps passing all these, uh, you know, these laws to try and, you know, take away our gun rights or at least, you know, start nibbling away at the edges of the Second Amendment at the very least. But they also won't do anything about, hang on one second, conjecture, but they also won't do anything about the southern border wall. And we know that both parties won't touch that. It's become the new third rail of politics, which was Social Security of old. It's now the border wall. Um, so if they see incidents of targeted violence that are impacting our nation frequently and indiscriminately, why aren't they looking at these things? Why aren't they taking a look at that? Okay, go ahead, Conjecture. Conjecture, you still oh, I was just going to say that... Uh... If you look at it, like the actual cause of death in this country, you know, I mean, guns, they're not pretty high up there. In terms of murders, I mean, guns still quite aren't, I mean, they're they're up there. I'm not sure, you know, what they rank as, but when, you know, when they talk about these mass shootings and they always try to say, you know, there's more than, what is it, three or four mass shootings a day. Uh, if you ever looked at the sources they have, you can pull it up. Uh, NPR uses it. CBS uses it, maybe not CBS, but you know those more left-leaning news organizations. Sure. They get all of their information on a page, or I mean, it was formerly on Reddit. And in over half of those incidents, nobody died. You know, from that you can conclude we have the safest mass shootings in the world. Right. We do. But, you know, still we have to deal with the fact that the number one cause of death in the United States is being associated with the Clintons. Sure. It, it, that was a it joke, is. by the way. It was a very dry joke, but it was a joke. Oh, that was a good one, actually. I really like that because there is some truth to that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me bring in point number two <laughs> real quick. Point number two is, well, once again, the sense... Go ahead, Conjecture. I was just going point to one. say is that they're not even using any accurate information to report these things. As a matter of fact, even if a gun is mentioned over a 911 call, that's considered a mass shooting. Yeah. Uh, Iron Witch, you had something to say. Go for it, buddy. Yes, sir. And thank you for inviting me to the podcast this evening. Uh, incidentally, just the other day, uh, Attorney General William Barr went to Alaska. And he was with Liska Markowski, who's the senator from Alaska. As it turns out, Alaska has a tremendous problem with lawlessness. Mm -hmm. um, and... When I read this, it, the first line, incidents of targeted violence are impacting our, na our nation frequency and indiscriminately. Well, let me just tell you that most people don't even know the amount of rape that's going on in Alaska right now would blow your mind. They have so many people being raped and killed up there that the attorney general himself had to go up there and investigate the situation. He called it, in his own words, a national emergency. Okay. Wow. They have so many women being raped and abused in Alaska that they cannot process all of the rape kits. They're stacked up to the ceiling. So it's a travesty, in my mind, for a bill like this to have been written in January and only rolled out after a quote-unquote mass shooting and not for the good of the American people that live in Alaska. Because even though they're Native Americans, they're Americans nonetheless, and they deserve better than what they're getting. And the attorney general was just there to address this earlier this week. And I didn't know if anybody knew this, but I know it. And I wanted to bring it to your attention. Well, thank, thank you, you, Iron. I had no clue. I had no idea that happened. I didn't know they had such a problem in Alaska either. So thank you for that information yeah. as well. It, it's underreported. Nobody wants to know it. Nobody wants to touch it. 
Um, and it's a shame. It's a travesty. But in the frontier areas of our country, like in places in Alaska, where they have very, very few, if almost no police officers um, and, and, and any kind of you know legal jurisdiction, it's like a lawless no man's land. It's everything goes. And to me, with the money that Alaska pulls in through the pipelines that they have up there, that is unacceptable. 100% unexcusable and unacceptable to bottom line. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, uh, let, if you don't mind, gang, I'm going to move on to point number two in the sense of Congress. Once again, okay. the sense of Congress is a collaborative, multidisciplinary, multi-jurisdictional behavioral threat assessment and management process on a federal, state, local, and tribal level, and, and they say complements the development of better methods for strategically preventing targeted violence in communities, including schools. Okay. The inclusion of schools now. So that's, right. so that's where we get started in, in, in that regard. I'm going to bring up point three before we do commentary again, if you don't mind, gang. Number three, uh, once again, the sense of Congress is the United States has the capability to rapidly develop behavioral threat assessment and management guidelines and best practices because, like, they're, they're the best qualified to do so, right? <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, Iron, if you wouldn't mind, uh, what's your thoughts on this? Now that we're talking, now we've included the schools into this program, and now we've actually talked about, well, the government has the capability to develop this program and has set up guidelines and best practices. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, wow, I mean, that's a big one. But these guidelines that they've had, uh, these aren't anything new. Um, and we also know um, school shootings are nothing new. Um, when you say multidisciplinary, um, that's a fallacy because because we know that the uh, quote unquote multidisciplinary um, functions like fusion centers and whatnot that you're going to hit on later on in the document, um, we know that they don't work. We know the government does not share information the way it should because there's there, there's a lot of uh, um, you know jockeying and things with within the judicial system and the legal system overall, and they are, you know they're all trying to get credit for themselves quote unquote. Mm -hmm. I do notice that it says a uh, tribal level compliments. I'm assuming they're speaking of Native American, um, you know, I, 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 so, you know, I'm seeing a lot of this in this bill and it says preventing targeted violence in communities, including schools. And that goes to my point before about um, these poor beaten down people, you know, up in Alaska on the frontier, uh, how unacceptable it is. Um, so. That's bad. And then it says the United States has the capability to rapidly develop behavioral threat assessment. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, really? Right? You mean you mean like all the soldiers with PTSD? You mean rapid like that? Yeah. Do you know? Yeah, really. Plus um, also, let's not even mention the fact that most of our politicians in the United States are sociopaths or psychopaths by definition. Exactly. Now we're getting cooking here, guys. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go to point number four real quick. The United States should encourage the sharing of such guidelines and best practices for streamlined and cohesive use across the United States. Very interesting. So they're going to create an ISO process, a standard of operations across the entire United States with, of course, their, their, uh, uh, their, their ability to develop the best behavioral threat assessment and management guidelines and best practices. Point number five. Once again, then the sensor. I, uh, chip in? Go ahead. When I uh, gave this bill a general glance, I believed its sort of, what do you call it, side effect was to take away rights for anyone who either worked for the government or worked with the government in any way. For instance, you know, the whole schools where you held a position there, or maybe even if you were a contractor, it, that one seemed a little fuzzy, but you get what I mean there. I do. But it seemed as though the primary purpose beyond that secondary sort of side effect was to allow the government to cover its own arse. Yep. As to have a fall guy designated for, you know, if any incident happens within the government, if any shooting happened there, you know, they, they know exactly who to blame. And then they would amend their documents to be more comprehensive about mental health. Yep, understood. It's, 
And, and in fact, that's big picture stuff. Um, because, uh, and we'll get into that in a little bit if you don't mind conjecture, but that's an excellent observation. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, may I also uh, say something about uh, number four myself? Sure. All right. Um, what I learned from making the video that I made on this uh, particular subject, especially S265, talks about it, and the United States should encourage the sharing of such guidelines and best practices for streamlining and cohesive across the United States. What I got out of studying this bill is that government is going to be using money to um, for to uh, encourage or manipulate or um, strong arm states across the country in, uh, to accept their program that they're developing through these bills and they're going to link a network across the country of everybody who's getting involved um, and that is, I guess you could say, and in my opinion, this is going to really hurt law-abiding citizens. Of course it will. Criminals. Yeah, of course. Go ahead. Directed towards people who are middle class or lower middle class who are all trying to follow the law or the letter of the law in each state, city, or county that they're in. If this is just designed to do just that. I mean, if you Google what is the meaning of a criminal um, and you and you look at that, okay, versus what it is they're trying to go after, somebody who's in a gang who has a gun isn't going to meet their their version of what a criminal is. Yep, and I'll tell you what. <clears throat> we're kind of diverting a little bit from the bill, if you don't mind, and get back get back on the bill. And we will hit that. That's big picture stuff again. Maybe I'm going right. too slow in reading the points. Let me finish off all, all the seven no, points fine. here. that's fine. Okay. Uh, so once again, in the sense of Congress and their opinion, establishing such guidelines and best practices is an important step towards preventing targeted violence. That's number five. Number six. Uh, once again, in the sense of Congress, such guidelines and best practices should account for different needs of communities across the United States. And, number seven, it is in the national security interest of the United States to develop such guidelines and best practices. Okay, so basically we have now hit the sense of Congress. The definitions gets even more interesting. Um, and I'll tell you what, there's room for commentary here real quick. Let's not talk about criminality at this point because I don't think we've gotten there yet. That comes in the definitions, in my opinion. But, right. but for instance, let's go to, um, and I'm going to skip over a section here, um, appropriate committees of Congress, da dee da dee da behavioral threat. You know. Let's skip right down yeah. to number five, fusion center. Right. The fusion center has a meaning given um, in the term section, 210AJ1 of the Homeland Security Act of 2002. So a fusion center basically means multiple government agencies coming together for the same goal. That's what they call a fusion center. Um, okay, Institute of Higher Education. The term Institute of Higher Education has a meaning given in Section 101 of the Higher Education Act of 1965. So, and, and now we get it to the interesting stuff here, mental health service professional. The term mental health so service professional has the same meaning given to um, Section 799B of the Public Health Service Act, and there's a link to click on here. But once again, they're giving all these terms and titles, uh, they're bringing a lot of that interesting stuff in here to basically start setting up positions from within the structure, this, this construct that they're actually setting up. Now, secretary does mean secretary of Homeland Security. So that means this would be under the executive branch. This is nothing that Congress will have oversight over. This is, is do you guys, um, you guys follow me on that one? You think that I'm correct in that? Yes. yes. Okay. Absolutely. This is a bureaucracy getting set up. Yep, it is. that's correct. Timmy, Timmy. Go ahead, Conjecture. Would it even matter if they had oversight? Because if you listen to what Rand 
to Paul, right? It took me years, from what I understand, to get into the Intelligence Committee in Congress. And by the time he got there, he found out they couldn't get anything anyways. It, you were just as effective in getting information in the Intelligence Oversight Committee as you were not being in it at all. Yeah, but uh, that's the thing, though. It, we've, we've covered a couple of terms here. We're talking about, um, let's see, national security interest of the United States under one branch of government, um, the, the executive branch. Uh, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, that's something that uh, should probably be answerable to Congress. Agree. So, okay, basically, let's look at a, a, a larger picture now. We have a, a, a new agency that they're trying to set up that would be partnered with FEMA and Homeland Security, in, in my guess. This thing will have the ability to go into medical records, this, this new juggernaut thing they're creating. Go into medical right. records, education records, um, any other kind of records I'm sure they can find, and basically start assessing whether or not individuals are a threat based on these records. So kind of minority report kind of stuff coming out of this right. so, so far. And once again, it's a bureaucracy, just like Iron Witch said, just like Conjecture said. That's exactly right. A lot of unelected officials, um, in fact, it's even, you know, once it's under Homeland Security, I mean, there's no more elected officials anymore. Um, once it's under, you know, um, you know, the executive branch, I mean, there's just no one electable, no one accountable anymore. Uh, the president is ultimately accountable for the entire operation of this thing. Okay, now we have room for a larger discussion here. So what, they're, what are they looking for exactly when you guys read this bill? They're looking for threat assessment. They're looking for uh, basically anyone who might be a danger. Um, and they're calling it behavioral threat assessment. So uh, your guys' thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Conjecture, because I believe you have some valid information that we need to hear. Conjecture, are you with us? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I believe I gave my overarching picture of the primary uh, motivation for this. Okay. So going into to motivations, it seems to me that the motivation of this bill, and by the way, we could even take a quick look here at the, um, at the uh, House of Rep Representative bill, which looks very, very similar. So okay. not a whole lot of differences here. In fact, they're using the same seven points. It is the sense of Congress that, you know, basically they're saying, well, it's, it's our experience and our wisdom and our information that we have that lead us to believe all of these things. So uh, what's wrong with local law enforcement? You know, what's wrong with the sheriff's office? Apparently they feel that's not enough. We must have a massive, massive juggernaut bureaucracy set up by the federal government that will actually probably end up having power over these agencies. Um, and exactly. I, and I did say, go ahead, Conjecture. Oh, I was just going to say, I did say in the bill that uh, there would be new appointable positions created in these government agencies to oversee set task. Okay. But I didn't quite catch who was going to be making the appointment. I assume it would be local official. Yeah, we'd have to see on that one. I mean, there's no telling. Oh boy, no government. Hey, Chaos. Have... Go ahead, Chaos. I'm sorry. Oh boy, more government because we didn't have enough already. Yep. Yeah. I expect nothing less from con men. This yep. bill's just here to wage war against you. Yep. And just like every other bill. That's the only point of any bill. <laughs> yeah, to grow government. And if Trump right. was a true conservative, this wouldn't be happening. Uh, the, right. the, the platform of the Republican Party is to shrink government and to shrink taxes and to shrink government influence over the people's lives. That's their platform, and they're not doing it. So, uh, so if anyone who thinks they are a Republican, they need to actually look on the Internet and find out what the conservative platform is, and you'll find that uh, it is not at all recognizable with the current-day Republicans in Washington, D.C., 
but the TC, I have a comment on that too. Sure. And I agree 150%. Um, just if you review some of these terms, you know, fusion center institution, you know, mental health service professional, non-government organization, you know, post-secondary vocational institution, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay. That stuff, we already have that stuff in place. This, this is basically the federal instrument trying to circumvent the power of the local authorities by grabbing it all up and overseeing it. They don't want the sheriff to do it. They don't want the local. They're going to make the local people all do it, but they're going to have the overall say. This goes right back to the Federalist Papers, right? Mm -hmm. Strong federal government or strong state. Right. Now, if the states were to do this themselves, you know, kudos on them, right? But just because the federal government does it, um, we've seen how they've mismanaged so many things before. And this is at, at this level and at the scope that they're talking about. This goes right to the term that you used before, which was repropo was was minority report, mm-hmm. you know, trying mm-hmm. to determine a preactive, you know, a, 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 a pre-crime is what this is. Indeed. Right. Indeed. OK, I by the way, for our viewing audience here, I brought up definitions because Fusion Center. Um, and it's actually from the document I linked, or it was linked in the uh, in the. Oh, there HR is a, uh, Go ahead. A positive note to come from the growing of government. As government grows, it becomes less efficient, and people simply stop listening. I don't know. As they grow, they become more totalitarian. They take away more rights. They tax people more to the point where we have to shift into oh, communism. Go ahead. It's the good from the bad. Yep. But as they try to shift more totalitarian, you know, there's the old quote from I believe it was Star Wars: "The tighter your grasp, the more worlds will slip through your fingers." Yep. I suppose. Um, let me read for the viewing audience here what fusion center means by the government's definition. By the way. The term fusion center means a collaborative effort of two or more federal, state, local, or tribal government agencies that combines resources, expertise, or information with the goal of maximizing the ability of such agencies to detect, prevent, investigate, apprehend, or respond to criminal or terrorist activity. This is where we're coming into what American Man had said earlier. This, the whole purpose of this is to actually, uh, detect you know people you know uh, you know minority report stuff you're actually going and and by their behavior determining whether or not they're going to commit a crime in the future and then act accordingly you know that's what the you know, fusion center means man this is pretty nuts um this is you know and this is straight out of orwell anyway i mean yeah it sounds real nice uh you know, the actual Threat Assessment Prevention and Safety Act of 2019, it sounds very friendly. It sounds, you know, well, like Tommy, something. So, like so something. doesn't the Patriot Act. Yep, that sounds very yeah. patriotic, doesn't it? It oh, does. Yeah, that's, right? yeah, that's why they call it the Patriot Act, but it, there's nothing patriotic about it. Yep. What about and Tommy, the, you, hit it, you, you hit it on the head earlier when you, when you said specifically these are republicans introducing these bills these are not the quote-unquote democrat gun well, grabbers yes, these are your republican gun exactly right mm-hmm. that's correct and in fact this bill i believe in the senate side is being proposed by senator marco rubio so yeah. from florida yeah, and so in the house it's also proposed by a republican mm-hmm. <clears throat> but these are the these are just the same it's them versus you Yep. I, these are bipartisan bills that are that are being pushed by both Democrat and Republicans. So my question would be to the Republicans that are listening to this, what say you now about your party? Yep. Well, and, and that's the thing, you know, basically you'll have a lot of people uh, who really truly think this is the best thing to do for America. But I'm telling you, there are better things to do in America. For instance, I mean, not to go too far off of topic here, but do we need this massive, bloated government bureaucracy that will cost us, you know, upwards of $500 billion a year? And by the way, I picked that number out of the air. Um, or should we just have teachers armed in schools? What sounds right. cheaper? What, what would definitely prevent a, you know, a, a mass shooting in a school better? 
you know, a, a massive bureaucracy, no. you know, of threat assessment, or a, a teacher that has a gun in a school that can actually take care of a problem very quickly. And, and not right. just one, but all teachers armed in all schools. That makes well, sense Timmy, to me. Go this, ahead. this goes, to me, this goes a lot further than, than quote unquote gun violence. Sure. Right. It, it, this says violence straight, straight up. So yeah. Um, in, in today's terminology and the labels that people put on things and, and people that actually believe there's such a thing as a safe space, okay, um, I could look at someone and be accused of violence. And then the next thing you know, I, I've got the minority report police up my yang hole, you know, wanting to know this, that, and the other thing just because I have a mean look on my face. So this thing has, has the propensity to grow well, well, well beyond, quote, unquote, gun, right, gun issues. Like, look at Chicago. Look, I mean, that, that's a perfect example of the failure of the state and federal unit trying to um, control gun violence, and, and it's an utter failure. So I see no possibility for anything like this to even functionally work at all. Do you mind if all. I uh, interject here? Go ahead, Conjecture. The purpose, you know, when you talk about how much it costs, politicians don't care how much it costs in physical dollars because, you know, they're making decisions for which they don't have to pay for, you know, a market failure. What they care about is the cost to their ego. You know, if you are one of those politicians that thinks one of these, the great threats of America is gun violence, it is a great threat to your ego not to vote for this bill. Yep, I understand that too, and in fact, that's it, where they pay their cost. Yep, and it doesn't escape my attention that they don't have any information in either bill about the probable costs involved in creating this juggernaut government agency. So well, that well, the government doesn't even know how much money it spends. It waits till they get the receipts. They always go over budget. Yep, they do we, indeed. You know, they would know if we quit giving them so much money. Yep. Okay, so so minority report stuff, looking for any type of, um, you know, violence. And by the way, I defaulted to gun violence because they brought the schools into it on the bill. And so that automatically, unfortunately, mentally, I went right to uh, gun shoot, you know, the school shootings. So right, um, go ahead, American. Go ahead, Man. Hey, I think that we're all forgetting something that could be very important in this discussion about this bill or these bills rather, and that is, this is a, a concern of mine, that they're going to be arresting people for committing crimes they have not yet to commit, but they deem necessary to arrest these people because according to their data, their information or their algorithms or however they're doing it, said person will have commit this crime at one point in time in the near future, according to them. Yep. Well, and you know, I could I could take this a step further too along the lines you just talked about, and that is where the government mandates everyone have uh, Amazon Echo in their home or the Google Talking Assistant, whatever they call the. I don't know what those things you are. Mind if I make an interjection? Go ahead, conjecture. I didn't say that they would be arresting people, but it's more like one of those pre-crime actions, if you know what I. Mean. Like you might call it a thought crime. That's classified under pre-crime, exactly. in which point. the government takes, quote-unquote, pre-crime, yes. you know, actions to prevent a crime before it happens. And the problem with that is it completely, you know, goes in the face of due process. So you might start having people in government that start getting fired without any sort of actual proof necessarily you know i mean as these bureaucracies change to meet these new adjustments and you know there's going to be the people who think this might actually be a good thing and they'll make adjustments to their bureaucracies so that advisements from these appointed individuals carry more weight and then people can start getting fired for pre-crimes as i'm going to start calling them because i don't remember a source for this because there is you know some great piece of fiction i can't remember or nonfiction that talks about this. Okay. Well, what I was going to say was um, Alexa, you know, and, and these types of devices will probably end up in people's homes, be mandatory. 
uh, at some point if you get out of prison you got to have an Alexa in your home so they can listen in on you full time that sort of thing they can add to that database you know of whether or not you're gonna you know be thinking or talking about doing some sort of crime so uh, you know Fourth Amendment privileges here I, I definitely am going to predict are going to be severely violated by such a bill um, the Threat Assessment Prevention and Safety Act of 2019. I don't think we can lim put any limits on something like this when we're talking about minority report type of, um, you know, legislation going on in this day and age. Hey, I know how to fix this problem. How's that, Craig? What you have to do is just buy a bunch of Bitcoin and then leave the country. <laughs> <laughs> we should all be so lucky. Hey, guys, continue the conversation. I'll be right back. Yes. Um, at any rate, I think that if these bills pass, of course, they're going to join these into one bill because they all pretty much say the same thing. Both of them do. They'll be able to manipulate these bills, take away or add to or adjust as they see fit. Oh, of course. And, and this whole thing is just a KGB type operation. They're going to use the security apparatus as a weapon against everyone. Uh, anyone, and they're also, dissident, anyone they don't like huh? for any reason and I, I believe people like myself will be on the top of their list not only that but I believe somehow they'll try to join this with the Patriot Act and then make people like me and anybody else out here on YouTube who's for America and the Constitution to be a terrorist and deem me um, a threat to national security and then I'll be arrested without due process and imprisoned yeah, the whole problem is that we allowed them to create this term, terrorism. But terror is just an emotion. So what is a terrorist? <laughs> exactly, what is a terrorist? That is a good, good question, my friend. Yes, good question. I believe the United States government and other governments like that are the terrorists. Absolutely. <laughs> And the American people have severely dropped the ball. We've allowed the government to brainwash us, take over our mind in every area and aspect of our lives, and manipulate us to think pretty much like cattle. I'm sorry, I have to be so blunt, but I'm a straight shooter. And Americans don't question their government. Here's the problem. You'll see a lot of Americans go on social media in a video statement they or they put in some kind of blog, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, or some other social media site and state, I don't trust the government, but yet they sit by idly and watch these kind of bills be passed and then complain about it. Do you mind if I interject a note here? By all means. Uh, footnote. Philip K. Dick was the person that coined pre-crime, in which laws are focused around crimes that have not happened, might not happen, but could happen. That's uh, it. And, and to your point, um, conjecture, what you just said, like it, it, in, my in my position, in my shoes, and in every single veteran's shoes in America today, we all fall into this category. Have we trained? Are we trained to be violent? Yes. Do most of us, if not all of us, have firearms? Yes. Right? Right. So th there you go. There is your pre crime right there. Just me having the knowledge to be violent and the ability to do violence automatically qualifies me as a pre crime. Uh, you want to know my opinion? And I can say this bluntly, and hopefully TC won't be upset with me for saying this, but TC upset it himself. And I'm not sure if uh, he uh, in the podcast or not. Um, but I think America needs to uh, need to do something with our politicians other than at the voting box. We uh, we've allowed these people to be our taskmasters for too long. We've uh, we've bent over backwards. We. Knelt down, we worship these people like they're God, and we've allowed them to take full control over our our lives. And we need to take this power back from them. Torches, pitchforks, guillotine. Whatever it takes, brother. <laughs> Whatever 
means necessary, we need to get rid of the politicians that Donald Trump said he was going to get rid of. Drain the swamp. He wasn't going to drain the swamp. He pulled the plug, filled it back up, and threw more creatures in. What do you talk about drain the swamp? <laughs> I'm sorry. Guy, but nah. All well, politicians are the same. <laughs> yep, that's why they all want this bill. So it gives them power, takes yours away. So it doesn't right. matter who is in there, they're going to get their bill. Yeah. And they're coming after people's retirement right now as we speak. They really are. Like nothing can be done about it. And nobody seems to want to do anything about it. As long as everybody gets to stop off at the donut shop or go to their favorite movie and stop in their favorite restaurant and gain another five pounds, go home and watch their favorite television program or cable show, they're happy. A sad state of affair, but that's just the reality of it. There is no such thing as an outsider. What happened to the statesman? Does anybody in here know what a statesman is? Mm -hmm. Something we haven't seen in America in, you know, since its inception. Exactly my point. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. We need statesmen. We don't need politicians. I mean, look at what happened to uh, anybody who has thought that we had the right, according to the Constitution, to form a militia. There have been several people, and I can't remember names right now to quote off the top of my head, that have tried to form militias in the last, what, 30, 40, 50 years, and they've become some kind of victim of the government or died some kind of strange death, or were found with some kind of evidence for the federal government to put them in a federal prison and throw away the key. You know, this stuff is no longer a conspiracy theory anymore. This is fact. America, you need to wake up. Anybody else have anything they want to add? No, I think that's it. Uh, that's all I have. <laughs> what about you, Conjecture? And which? Just, uh, just that? overall, this is this is just a you know uh, a red flag law bill, whatever you want to call it. Um, yes. This being introduced by the Republican side of the deep state um, to to partner up and party with the Democrat versions of these bills. I mean, it's nothing more than that. I mean, and we know it. We all see it. I mean, it, it's a factual thing. And back to TC's point earlier. Um, you know, these are Republicans introducing this stuff. These aren't your quote unquote evil Democrats doing it. These are your evil Republicans doing it. This dude right. here on the House bill, he's from Texas. Okay. The other dude is from Florida, right? right. Rubio, right? So don't, I don't want to hear about your red pill or your Trump train or your this or your that. It's, it's, you're completely brainwashed and snowed if you think these people care about you at all. And that's exactly. what I got to say about that. Oh, um, I was just going to say it might be prudent instead of calling these things red flag bills. I think we need to really start calling these things pre crime bill. I, I agree, but I think we can call them both. Um, but you're right. Both of you are right. Um, honestly, in my opinion, um, these See, I, are all, I, I just hate labels. You know what I mean? I just hate labels. Right. Um, it's basically anti-constitutional. It is. Anyway, it's anti-constitutional regardless of, you know, which Definitely. shoebox you put it in. Um, red flag is just something that's been more in the forefront on the news and stuff lately. People are starting to digest that term and understand it. But yet again, it's all unconstitutional. And anything that's proposed against the Constitution is unlawful and illegal. And right. The Constitution even says that itself. But the problem in this country is enforcement, right? That's what it is, is shutting down unlawful and these illegal bills and these politicians who we know should be statesmen, but they're not. That's where all of this stuff comes from is enforcement by the people. We don't enforce these things through our Second Amendment. It's unfortunate. I'm, I can't, you know, I'm, this is just my opinion. I believe there's probably a good 70 percent or more of Americans that don't even know what a constitution is or what it says. Well, I agree. I agree. 
and I've seen so many people do those, you know, interviews on the street, you know, um, sometimes you guys might know a Mark Dice, he does some and other people do them, but the, but the level of intelligence in this country is definitely at an all time low. This oh, yeah. is got to be the dumbest population on this planet at this time. I, I mean, couldn't not- agree more. I, I couldn't agree more with you, man. Um, especially nowadays. Um, I think it's, Anything that has to do with civics in America and schools anymore that I don't know what they're teaching. Um, I ask my son questions. I have a 14 year old son who's in school. He has no idea what the Constitution is or what it says. Job now in American public schools is to make these kids as dumb, retarded and uneducated as possible. And that's part of the plan that's being done by design. Each generation that follows the next becomes dumber and dumber and easier to distract. But, uh, this bill and bills like this are a part of that plan. To, I mean, each generation that comes, they become more reliant on the government. They're becoming less self-reliant and less aware. Yes, Drifter, you're right. The overall objective here is to be able to convey this information to the general newbie. Tonight, we are preaching to the choir. We all know this information. How do we share it with everyone else? Agree on a narrative, plan it out, then deliver the content in an agree measured flow. T. Well, that's a good uh, idea, but the question is, how do we do that with all the censorship that's going on on social media sites? President Obama and now Donald Trump have given these sites more control over the internet than they've ever had. You know how you do it? I'll tell you how you do it. You do it through any means necessary. You know, I grew up in a time before the internet, before cell phones. Um, When you wanted news, you could go read it off of a, a light pole. People used to take flyers and tack them to light poles, put them on mailboxes, put them in your, you know, bagel shop on the wall, right? I mean, there's ways to spread information beyond the internet. Sure, it's going to be a limited audience, but if we all work together and we all do it, we can get with the word out. I mean, it's doable. I mean, we've done it in the past. Even if you have to wear a sign and stand on the street corner, hey, these guys are thieves and they're stealing your money and they're trying to control you. You need to do whatever it takes. I agree with that. And that's a good idea and a good suggestion. But I mean, how many people will we reach? I mean, you know, it's going to take a lot of energy and a lot of resources. With people like us, we're limited on those resources. Hill, we're trying to stay just what's getting ready to come around the corner with the new financial reset. And now this July with uh, the possible food shortage uh, because of all the flooding and the skyrocketing prices on food that are taking place this summer. They're they're just dwindling away more and more at the resources that we have saved to put together just to survive. Well, and you know what, to, to your point right there about the resources and stuff, right? You, do you know that they actually give quails, you know, like a quail, a bird? Do you know yeah. that they, they give these things cocaine so they can observe the mating habits? And this thing costs in the millions of dollars for tests like that? Do you know that? Oh, it wouldn't I mean, be a good thing. That's, well. that's a fact. It, that's, that's a real thing. Um, so when we talk about that, you know, we have to keep things like that in light. The the illegal immigration issue going on now is costing us billions and billions and billions of dollars. It's just more waste, fraud, and abuse. I mean, we've all experienced this. I've experienced it my entire life, and I don't see it stopping anytime in the near future, and that's sad. How do we get the word out? We do the best job we can with what we have on every mechanism we can. Sometimes it's delivering it by hand. Sometimes it's making – I plan my expectation. I'm going to put this up on, on my YouTube site. I'm going to post it in my discords that I'm in and go and visit my neighbors and let them know, hey, you know, they got these two bills and we should call our, uh, rep- you know, uh, our state representatives and say, hey, we're, we're, your constituents are not for this. I expect to call my senators and my congressmen to, to have a word with them about this. I agree with you. I plan on doing the same. I'm not sure what you meant by that statement, Drifter, but... Um, I think what TC would say if he was here right now is that we're kind of getting off topic of the bills and that we probably should either stay on topic or just 
technical difficulties. I don't know where he is. I am back. I'm sorry about that, gang. I want to thank American Man 1967, Chaos Craig, Conjecture, and Iron Witch for joining tonight. Uh, SC Drifter has been typing in the chat as well. Thank you very much, Driftman. Um, and Joe's been typing in the chat as well at some point. So thank you all for joining us on this podcast tonight. And I think the general message is here, if you are at all inclined to do so, please do call up your senators and representatives and tell them no to these bills. Of course, these will be linked down in the description section, so you guys can click on them, uh, actually to have a look, and then, you know, go ahead and dial up your senators and representatives and say, absolutely not. No more totalitarian bills from Congress. We're done. You guys can't grow anymore. We're, we're, you know, you guys need to smoke more cigarettes and drink more coffee and stunt your growth. You know, we've, we've had it with this, uh, especially when they're talking about doing something that potentially could take away pretty much all of your rights. Uh, everything from uh, jurisprudence. I mean, we could talk about the, the entire Bill of Rights going past the Fourth Amendment, which goes into your rights in court. Um, and it looks like a lot of that would be bypassed through a bill like this as well. But I want to say to the larger listening audience, thank you very much for listening in tonight. We appreciate each and every one of you. American Man and Iron Witch, of course, are uh, YouTube content creators. You'll be able to find their channels below in the description section of this video. Please check out their channels. Please subscribe to them. They're valuable members of our Truth, Money, and Freedom Discord chat group. We're very, very happy to have them in here contributing this evening as well. So once again, gang, have a wonderful evening. God bless you all. Mm -hmm.